Hi everyone, it's me, Kelly Sunflower. So I thought I'd hop on today and show you my latest deck. And this is called the Heaven and Earth Tarot and it is a Llewellyn publication. No, it's a Lascara Bowl publication. So let's open this up. I think this could be the backs of the cards. So inside, you get the guidebook and the cards. It comes up, comes with this lovely lift up ribbon. So let's take the cards out. Let's put the box away and look at the book first. Okay. So, so let me see how many pages it is. It's 150, 159 pages, which is okay for a book kind of like a lovely kind of matte book Jack Sipholf and Jamie Elford the Scarabal. so this book was published in Italy gives you the Scarabal email website, Facebook page and Instagram page so in the contents it has here um, part one, Heaven and Earth. Part Then it's got Major Arcana, the Suit of Cups, the Suit of Pentacles, the Suit of Wands, the Suit of Swords, and part two, the Nature of Tarot. So it's got here, Unlocking the Meaning of the Heaven and Earth Tarot. This book contains information for each one of the 78 cards. The descriptions are divided into five sections. Each relates to a different way to interpret or approach the card. Use this information as a starting point to help you crack the code for reading tarot. Be patient when working with the heaven and earth tarot. Assigning meanings to your questions may not be easy. It can take a while to um, decipher what the cards say, especially when many cards appear on the table. Tarot contains a lot of visual information. Slow down, give your intuition space to unravel the mysteries. Close your eyes, open your mind to the world of possibilities Tara brings. Take deep breaths and allow the, the characters on each card to guide you into a world of connecting with your intuition. Use this booklet information to kickstart your intuition. If this book conflicts with what the card imagery tells you, go with your gut. I'm going to tell you how to use your descriptions of the cards. Section one, a description of the, of the card imagery. This gives you the basic descriptions, what the image contains and will help you and the book at the end. Section two gives you many different ways to read each card. Section three um, is about the symbol. Section four includes six questions to ask yourself. Section five gives you ways to apply the transformative power of the card meanings to your life and then it gives you like a um major arcana kind of table so it's got the numberings up to 21 then for example the four the keyword is innocence the hebrew letter is alpha and it gives you the, the hebrew letter symbol and the and the letter meaning is ox so it does that for each of the major arcana so number card keyword hebrew letter and hebrew letter meaning then for each um card it gives you like a picture and this is like a sepia kind of picture and then it talks about the image uh, um heavenly interpretation the earthly interpretation questions let me read you the full you can kind of have an understanding of what how this goes a fool stands at the edge of a cliff. The clothing displays a Jewish tree of life on them. The, the robes are dark in colour and a mantle of moss has been placed on their soldiers. The inside of their cloak is coloured with fire, reminding us that fire can be a creative force as well as destruction. A small bag is tied to a branch which hangs over the shoulder. It holds the possessions the four needs as they set out on their journey. 
a rose is delicately held between the fingers and their left hand. A dove flies in the air alone. A wolf pup howls at the fall by their feet. I mean, it's got here heavenly interpretation. The fall is neither male or female. They are indigenous, which means they carry the physical and cultural traits of both genders into one being. This allows them to move inside and outside of any and all cultures to watch, learn and integrate the lessons from all the aspects they witness. Their number is zero, which also moves in and out of time and space. There are many cultures that do not place zero in the, at the beginning of a sequence, so it is like our fall an endogenous position can be moved around to any place in the major arcana sequence. In this way, the four has access to all the other cards, meaning, meanings and archetypes. They can learn to master them all. The four is the beginning, middle and end of a sequence. The energy is new and innocent. The four keeps an open mind and wanders around the world, seeing the things for the first time. So the F... The earthly interpretations, it's got here keywords, innocence, Hebrew letter alpha meaning ox, correspondence air, Aquarius and Uranus. That might meanings, new journey, beginnings, innocence, freedom, push through the challenges, playful behavior, leap of faith, reversed meanings is reluctance to change, being blocked, desire to stay where you are, feeling um, restrained, fixed position, unblock yourself. Questions to ask. What happens when the fool walks off the cliff? What items does the fool keep in his bag? What does the colour white mean to you? Is the dog helping or hindering the fool? What is the fool thinking? Where are they going? And then it's got here... Um, the fool's energy is generally read neutrally. It means a new start when it happens upright in a reading. The new start is contained with a beginner's mind and does not contain any preconceived notions about the journey or surroundings. It is an awareness of being in the person's moment with nothing flowing through your mind, just accepting everything as it is. This energy can relate to the moment when you're med med meditating. Of course, the moment you realize that you reach that stillness, it slips away. And this is how the false energy can slide out of the pure meanings and into the negative side. A reverse fall is unwilling to take the, the step forward to the cliff. It contains fear of the unknown and a desire to stay where they are. The reverse fall believes that all that they already know it all. It is the situation and does not need to continue any further. Okay, so that's, so that's how each card is described in the major arcana. So let's have a look at the minor arcana. Okay, so for the minor arcana, it looks like... Um, for each suit, for so for example, the cups, it gives you the name of the cup and a keyword. So for example, the ace of cups is emotional source, the two of cups is love, the three of cups is abundance, the four of cups is blocked pleasure, you know, etc. etc. For the minor arcanas, there doesn't seem to know to be no pictures. It describes the image. It gives you the heavenly interpretation, the earthly interpretation, question and um, interpretations. But doesn't seem to be no pictures, which is interesting, for the minor arcanas in this guidebook. The pictures are only for the major. But for each suit, you know, it gives you... A diagram of the card and the card meaning. I would have liked to have seen pictures as well, like, like it does, like it has in the major arcana. Let's let's have a little read of this. Tarot origins are, are rooted in myth. However, we can trace parts of the history back through the years and several cultures. Playing cards were invented in China before 
1000 AD, traders distributed the cards through trade routes all over the continent. The first appearance of tarot, as we know it, dated back to um, the 1400s in Italy. The, the, this deck, known as the Visconti, was used to play a popular game known as Tar Taroshi. In 1781, Anton Court de Gebrin, a French occultist, was among the first to associate the tarot with occult and divination practices. In the age of the most widely known kind of tarot was the Marseille deck. While, while the first tarot for divination purposes was created by Etella around 1785. In 1910, R48 commissioned Pamela Cummins Smith to draw artwork for a new type of tarot deck known today as the Ryder, Ryder Smith deck. Smith added its illustrations to all 78 cards. In 1944, Alistair Crowley carried out his own version, The Foth Tarot, featuring the artwork of Lady Frieda Harris. The rest of all modern decks can have their roots back in either the Foth or the Rider Waite Smith decks. Then it talks a bit here about um, how to use the cards um i just read a little bit about this because th this is to me the person's own interpretation and everyone's got their own um thoughts on how they want to use their cards but this is what um the author says tarot helps many people get clarity on areas of their life the cards can also be used for other purposes like mediation um focus creativity boosters or, or whatever your mind can come up with that said this book focuses prim primarily on helping you use the cards as a divination tool i mean it, it kind of tells you how to do that um i just read a bit. many readers use use spreads purposely designed patterns to set the cards in spreads come in all sizes and shapes um from self-designed to pre-created and talks a bit, a bit bit about the spreads there as well so um here um it talks about the past present and future spread and it outlines what each position means and then this spread here where will you go and what will you do this is a four card spread and it gives the meanings for each position then it's got um this is a oh, this nine card spread this one and this is called the above and below spread then it talks a bit about how you should conduct your first reading and then it's got a conclusion here let me read a bit, bit from the conclusion so it says here reading tarot is both a journey and an experience this reading will probably feel awkward but that is just the beginning of of the road after that, reading after reading, they will all become deeper and more potent or poignant. To become better in reading tarot, there is, in the end, only one way, practice. Okay. I'm going to give you um, paper here, lined paper, to do your own notes. So you get six pages to do your own writing. So this is a guidebook. Okay, so let's... um. Have a look at the cards now. Let's take this plastic off. So you get like a, a, a title card and it's got the scarabore there. These are the backs of the cards which are which was how the insert of the box was and how the back of the book looks like as well. The Llewellyn Lascarbell cardstock. The writing's a bit small, or maybe it's just me. So you get the four. I, lo I love the kind of sepia um, kind of um, colouring. So you get the four, you got his dog, you know, they've got the mountains there, you got the cliff. So the magician, and he's got all these tools. On his table, he's got the affinity above his head. You see all the suits there in the, in the garden. I love how the light shining 
over him as well. So you've got the High Priestess. Light and dark pillows. I don't know if that's supposed to be the moon above her head. I'm not sure. She's got her book there. So the Empress. In the nice garden. She's just sitting out there in nature. Looking relaxed. The Emperor. Very stern posture. Kind of no nonsense expressing on his face. So you've got the Hierophant. He's got the dud there. He's got his key in his hands and his pupils eager to learn. You've got the um, Lovers. This, this has got a very kind of biblically, biblical feel to me as well. You know, there's a lot of halos, the angel coming out of the sky. See the clouds there. So the chariot. Got the black and white sphinx. The symbol there. Strength card. I love how this strength is dominant in this picture. It's quite a dominant looking lion and she's she's soothing the lion. She's got a, um, affinity above her head. The hermit going away to solitude to think. Got the will here. Justice and you can see she's got her blindfold to be impartial. Is it a crown coming above her head? See, so you've got the hanged man. Death. The temperance. Wonder and balance and even mix. They all seem to have halos above, well, not all, but there's a lot of halos above people's heads in, the, in this deck. The devil, into the bondage and stuff. There's a tower, lightning and, and stuff like that. You know, there's people falling down. The star, beautiful star card. The moon. The sun, love this sun, love the sunflowers in the background, it's the colour here as well in this card. So you've got temperance, sorry, judgment, and the world. So it's kind of very Rider Waite Smithish. I mean, they said this deck is a hybrid, didn't they, Be between um, Thoth and Rider Waite? So, this is the Ace of Cups, so it goes into the suit. It's beautiful though. It looks like a water fountain coming out of a cup. So you've got the Two of Cups, and they've got keywords. So it's got love here, so this is probably, probably where the Thoth is coming into it. So the Three of Cups says Abundance. I must say, the writing is quite hard to read, but it could, could just be me, though. So, got Seven of Cups. Eight of Cups. Nine of Cups. I've noticed that in quite a few decks, they're doing this joined up writing, um, quite small. I don't know if it's if it's a trend setting thing, but they've got to understand that some people wear glasses and, and this sort of print is so difficult to read. I, I prefer if it was in block and not joined up. So this is Ten of Cups. So you've got the Princess of Cups. This should this will be the Knight of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the King of Cups. So it looks like the are princesses instead of page pages, which tends to be kind of foffy. 
So you've got the Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles. There's an interesting Four of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles. This is very Rider Waite Smith, this Five of Pentacles. The Six. The Seven. The Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles. So moving on to the court cards, you've got the Princess, the Knight, the Queen, and the King. So moving on to the um, suit of wands, I, I love that. Look at the branches waiting to sprite and all the kind of creative light coming in. So you've got the two of Wands, the three of wands. This is an interesting four of wands. Five of wands. This this looks very kind of like pippish, kind of foffish. It's got here strife in in the keywords. Six of wands, victory. Seven of wands. I, I can't read all the keywords, I'm afraid. Eight of Wands, that says Swiftness, I think. There's Nine of Wands. And Ten of Wands, Oppression. So you've got the Princess, not very fiery background. The Knight. The Queen. And the king, wow, looks quite powerful, that king of wands. So, you've got the suit of swords, you've got the ace of swords, the two of swords, you've got the moon in the background there, she's just trying to make her mind up. The key word says peace. Three of swords. Four of Swords, Five of Swords, it says Defeat, Six of Swords, Seven of Swords, Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords says pain. So you've got the Princess, the Knight, the Queen, and the King. I mean, you just got like a information card. Just ask me to follow them on Instagram. So let's see how these cards shuffle. Shuffle, they shuffle okay, just like normal regular cards. Um, what are my first impressions? I quite like the kind of like I love the colouring of the of the cards. I mean, I, I see more more RWS and Foff in these cards, but then this is just a first impression. I, I might see more Foff as I get to work with this deck more. Um, I'm not very impressed with the um, joined up writing. It's not friendly on my eye and it's quite difficult um, to read. Even though I don't mind keywords, I just wish the keywords were not done so fancy because not everyone can actually see that. Um, the book, let me have a look at the book. The book is quite informative. I just I just wish they had put more it, put illustrations in for the minor cards because they've got these lovely illustrations for the majors. But when it comes to the minor, there's no um, illustrations. Um, but apart from that, I think it's a gorgeous deck. Lovely um, colouring. Um, 
cardstock kind of semi gloss I would say and I'm looking quite forward to using this deck thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye for now